Alright guys, on to the second YouTube video now. Plan for today is we've got a photo shoot with Dead Threads. Uh, we've got to be wrapping their new new range of clothes and then we're on to a bit of a food prep. Okay, so we've got the to buy the food for the week and cook the meals for the week in advance. It'll save us a lot of time over the week. For now, uh, just clocking up the steps. So it's a rest day, gonna keep active on the rest day. So we're here in Hillford Forest Park. Uh, just keeping active, clocking up those steps and then we're on to the shoot so we'll get freshened up. So yeah, the main thing with the food prep is down to time management. So I'm quite busy during the week in that kind of Monday to Friday structure. I'll be out really early in the morning, so I wouldn't have time to cook before I leave. And then come the evenings, I just want to kind of get the office work out of the way and then settle down for the evening. So what the food prepping actually does over the week is it saves you so much more time. So I know guys that have the time and they'll cook probably every night and then for the next day. Whereas I will cook generally on a Saturday or Sunday and then that'll be my Monday to Friday, all good. And then I'll do the, the recook the next week. So when you think about the amount of hours that you're clocking up, I mean, when I do that big food prep, I'm probably spending about two, two and a half hours in the kitchen. Whether it be kind of cutting the meat, getting the prep, putting it in the oven, usually about an hour's oven time. Uh, anything needs a grill after that, pan fry and then obviously cooking it up, letting it cool, get the dishes out of the way. And there is there is a lot to it, and it's a lot more time consuming than people think. They see an hour cooked down and they think, oh, that's an hour, boom. But basically if you're gonna do that kind of every night during the week, prepping for the next day, then it's not that practical because if you look at the hours that you're using up in the week, then that's easily clocking up. I mean like six, seven, eight hours out of your week, just straight away, and that's just Monday to Friday. So. Very, more, very much more practical for me, uh, getting it done during the weekend and then getting it ready for the next week. For myself, obviously I'm busy in the gym. Um, I'll be in the gym from early morning until probably midday, get my own train done and then I'm home. So when I'm home, I'll basically just open up the laptop, get back to any kind of emails, program writing, all the online stuff there. So when it comes to evening, I don't really want to be thinking about food prep and what I'm gonna have the next day. So. Weekends tend to get done either Saturday or Sunday when I have a couple of hours free because what people don't realise is the amount of time that the food prep actually takes. So they're probably looking at the, the back of a packet and thinking one hour's cook time, sweet, that's an hour out of my day. But really see once you clock up the actual prep of the food, putting it in the oven, obviously the hour's cook time in the oven. Then weighing out the food, packing up the food, and um, sorting dishes, stuff like that. I think it's about two and a half hours standard would be the amount of time I spend in the kitchen doing the prep. So, a lot more practical to get done in one, one go for the week ahead. And even for some people, maybe twice, so you cook once and then you'll do it again, kind of halfway through the week. But uh, obviously, I know what you're probably thinking, if you're cooking meals for the week ahead, then it's gonna be very difficult to keep those meals fresh. So basically, if I was to cook on a Sunday, it'd be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's meals kept in the fridge and then anything for like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll freeze. When it comes to defrost and all that, then you're just kind of looking at taking them out the day before. So if I'm on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, I'll take out Thursday's meals from the fridge and leave them out to, to fully defrost before going in and eating them on the Thursday. So you will catch all that all in, in the video. Um, we'll take us through a shop in Tesco, all the foods that we're getting, explaining kind of why we're getting the foods. Um, You'll see what the weekly price comes to. And I'll see at the minute the photo shoot's done, so I'm going to be eating a bit more now. Um, would have been cheaper on the photo shoot because I'll see him eating a lot less and dieting down. So, give you a good idea, kind of price wise, um, if you're hitting kind of the calorie goals that I'm on at the minute. Um, and then I'll show you how it's done in terms of cooking. Today we're covering Death Threads, as you can see behind me, the brand that we're modeling for today. It's done a shoot for Death Threads before. Uh, quality of stuff, all gym based stuff, but we're branching out slightly towards more kind of lifestyle. Yep, that's why I street. shoot today, obviously got the jeans on, so we're going for a wee bit more casual approach rather than just gym clothes. So this is Jordan, the man himself, the man behind the, the company. Yeah, so we, we started the brand just over just over a year ago. Uh, we started with three products, just a, a three different colours of t-shirt. Uh, and then we brought out our hoodies and our sweats and our shorts and then and now we're about to release a new line of t-shirts and jumpers uh, so yeah it kind of started out just as an idea uh, for friend, friends friends uh, 
uh, just have a few t-shirts that were similar, but now we're kind of expanding to where we're, we're making it a more well-known brand. Yeah, no, it is doing very well. Um, as you can see, the stuff behind us is very nice clothes. And as you will see from the footage of the shoot, there's a lot of nice stuff coming out soon. Um, obviously expanding from the gym base where it is growing very well um, and you see if you're about Lisbon and Belfast you probably will see a lot of people wearing death threads when they're in the gym so definitely a growing brand uh, definitely one to look out for and you'll see the footage in the video of how we model for the clothes Alright guys, so Death Red shoot done as you'll see from the footage just gone. So we stopped off on the way home at Newton Bread at Tesco and we're going to get the weekly food shop done uh, to get the weekly food prep done as well. For the meats first, we'll start with the meats. And we'll go for chicken, bacon medallions, turkey, gammon steak. I think that's a ham as well. And then the other protein source is the Greek yogurt. So we'll try and clock them all up here. So starting off with the chicken, I'll probably eat one or two of them a day. Uh, I'll see 10 large fillets. They are quite large, so I'd say 10 of them is realistically like 12 normal fillets. So stock them well up on them. And we're going for two. So that is us. 25 quid down already. <laughs> So 10 smoked bacon medallions, probably get three packets of them. So would you cook them up? I'll have them as my first meal on training day with two bagels and two eggs. Class. See so coming off the diet and then getting meals like that in first thing where it's like 800 calories. Unreal. 13th of November. Just good. Three packets of them clocked in. Okay, so we are now in my kitchen, which is probably a bit weird. We got asked to stop recording in Tesco, so hopefully we covered most of the shop anyway. You should get a quick glance of how much it cost, which is in around the £70 mark, but that is me eating a lot more now, so shoot. Um, so I'll not take you through cooking all the, the food that we did get, but what I will do is I'll do kind of like a sample meal prep. So this will be one that's quite practical, say you've got a 9 to 5 job, or even if you're university or school and you're out all day, if you have access to a microwave, anything like that, this should cover it, okay? So what we've got is with pasta, we've got sweet potato fries, and we've got a lot of chicken, so one food pack of chicken. And I'll take you through how to cook each and every bit of that. With the chicken, these will make life very easy, okay? So basically what we've got inside, we've got a bag up here and the seasoning here. So what we're gonna do, gonna rip it open, Got the bag at the ready, so fidgety. I'll do that. And I've got the bag that we're gonna put the chicken in, so that's what's gonna keep the bag closed. We'll keep that handy there. Now all we're gonna do is you see the seal about halfway up rip that open and we've got the seasoning in there so all we're going to do is pour it in making life easy for ourselves close it twist it and shake it about get it well in and around all the chicken pretty evenly spread across them all making sure we're using all that seasoning and then when we've got that twisted, we've got, where'd it go? <laughs> there we go, there's the wee clip. And we just tie that to the top, nice and tight. So when you do put it in the oven, do leave yourself a bit of room because the bag will expand because of the heat. So there's one in there, and now we're on to the next. 
Here we are with two. Do check about twist. Close it nice and tight and they're ready to rock, they're ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna fire them in. Anywhere between 180 and 200 degrees. And we'll stick them on the top and you'll be able to see them expand as we go. So first one in, nice and easy. Time the clock, 6.53. So next up is our pasta. So when it comes to the pasta, these wee sauces make things easy. Personal favorite, tomato and herb. Okay, very good, cheesy tomato and herb. So we're gonna add cheese towards the end. What we're gonna do is start with the pasta. Those two is just gonna go 10 full handfuls. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're out of pasta. <laughs> so, eight, nine, and 10. So, plenty of pasta in the bowl. It's just done with that. And nice and simple. So, easiest thing in the world to make. So basically what we're gonna do is spread it around. Pour it over. Hopefully evenly spread. And all we do after this is we we'll fill it with water just up to the top of the label there. So we'll get the cold water going. And that's it. So you can see how far up it is there. All I'm gonna do just to make sure we kind of get all those bits in around the edge, want as much sauce as possible. It's just give it a wee shake. Make sure it's all in the water. And then pour it around. So plenty in around it. That's just done with that. Quick shuffle around, make sure it's all mixed in. Um, what we're actually gonna do with the pasta is we're gonna put tin foil over the top of it to keep it nice and soft as it cooks. Basically, if the heat of the oven is just going straight on it, it'll make the top kind of harden and potentially burn. Whereas, with the tin foil on it, it'll stay nice and soft the whole way through. Make sure it's all nice and tight. There we go. That's the next one in, ready to rock. And we'll stick it on the bottom shelf. Nice and easy. And uh, last up, sweet potato fries. So we've got two bags. It says there's 500 grams in each, but when it's cooked, it works out about 400. There's nothing complicated with these. Just gotta keep an eye on them when they're in the oven. So, nice and easy spread. And with these as well. Nice and easy spread. So only rule when cooking these is keep an eye on the ones at the back. So you will need to take them out of the oven the odd time and just get a quick check on them because the ones at the back will burn quicker than the ones at the front. So they're the next in. That's amazing. Perfect. So cooking time started before seven. Pasta should be about 45 minutes. So half an hour in, we'll take it out, give it a good stir. And then last 15 minutes that it's in, we're gonna play about with the cheese. We're gonna put stick cheese on it, stir it in, more cheese, stir in. With the sweet potato then, we're just gonna keep an eye on it for it burning. So we'll kind of give it a shuffle of bite, make sure it's not sticking to the pan. Take it out, maybe rotate it round, because as I say, the ones at the back will burn quicker. The chicken is an absolute gift. You just leave it there for the full hour. That's cooked, done. And then all to do is pack it.
for now is the two options you've got when it comes to meal prepping. So for me, I'm eating six or seven meals a day. So what I do is I will literally just get a load of chicken, fill a box with it, chop it up, and then I'll just have a box full of chicken. If you're meal prepping specifically for your meals, then you'll do what I'm about to do here. So basically what we've got is we've got the food skills here. Good to have electronic ones because you can just reset to zero once the wee tub is on. So what I'm going to do is grab a fork and get one bit of chicken here. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So we're using scissors just to chop it up. Uh, nice and easy. Food skills go up as we go. So chopping that. Fat. So smaller chunks, better for microwaving as well when you're reheating your meal rather than it kind of getting hot in places, not heating the whole way through. Those small chunks make it a lot easier. So for example, if you've got a meal plan that says, say 150 grams of chicken or 200 grams of chicken and 100 grams of sweet potato, what we can do then is we can actually just prep that whole meal in advance. So what I can do in work is I will have a tub of each because I'm probably having it for a few different meals um, in which case I'll just have that, I'll have my food scales with me and I can weigh out, I can set it on a plate 200 grams of chicken, reset 200 gra or 100 grams of sweet potato but for today, what I've got there is 225 grams of chicken and all I'm going to do is hit reset on the scales there and now all that we do is scoop up 100 grams of sweet potato and actually just prep that whole meal together as one so what 100 grams of sweet potato looks like is close there 102 grams so there is a meal prepped already so that's it ready to go you can bring that into work you can bring it on the go as long as you have a microwave and that's it ready to go what i tend to do because i'll always have food skills with me i have a few different sets when i'm in work i'll literally just have this plate full of just chicken and then i'll have another plate full of just sweet potato and then i can weigh it at the time but if for convenience and for the sake of convenience they're easy easy meal on the go so 120, sorry, 225 grams of chicken and 100 grams of sweet potato. You're probably looking at about 35 grams of carbs and probably hitting the 50, 50 gram mark of protein. So it's a really good meal. Nice and easy to make, as you've seen. And the pasta as well, so that is it, good to go. Generally, obviously portion sizes depends on what your plan is, if you're following a plan. But that has came out really well and reheats perfectly. So the likes of your chicken, when it comes to what I mentioned earlier about time management, so basically what I'll do, if this is a Monday and I'm cooking my meals for the week, for example, I'll cook up to probably the next Monday. But in terms of what goes in the fridge, we'll probably be up to about Thursday. Uh, after that, we'll be looking to freeze it. So for example, if I'm taking Friday's food out of the freezer, that'll probably be Thursday morning I do that. Leave it out, let it defrost, and then it's ready for the Friday. So good practical meal prep options for you. Uh, again, nice and basic to start this off, but there will be probably a bit more in depth and, or maybe what even I do for my weekly meal prep in a later video. So stay tuned for that. So that's it wrapped up. That is very basic meal prep, um, mainly to get your kid out just for during the week. Dead basic meals, dead simple to cook and easy to bring with you. So again, as you see, very small meals, easy to pack in your bag on the go. Um, obviously, if you're looking at anything more in depth in terms of meal plan or even more suggestions, recipes, anything like that, feel free to hit me up. So yeah, by the time this video posts, you'll have seen Dead Threads launch is live. I will hit a link in the description of the video so you can go over and check out their new range of products. Hopefully see me modeling a few of them, wrapping the, the dead threads. So we'll be putting in another order for my own clothing. So if anyone's interested in getting anything, hoodies, t-shirts, be sure to check out the link that I'm going to put in the description up for the website. That's where you can order from. It will be up on the Instagram. Um, get your orders in by the end of the month and I'm looking to get everyone kitted out 
before Christmas, well in advance of that. So second video ticked off, if you have made it this far, then thank you very much, very much appreciated. If you haven't already, make sure you've hit that subscribe button because there is a lot more coming, so make sure you stay tuned for that.